dear learners today we are going to study about ophthalmic preparations this video divided into three parts in first part we will see in detail about eye drops in second part we will see about eye lotion and eye ointment and in third part we will see how we can evaluate the ophthalmic preparations and what are the parameters for that so let us start with the lecture so these are the learning outcome of after attending this lecture you will be able to define ophthalmic preparations you will be able to understand essential requirements for ophthalmic preparation and you will be able to explain of formulation method of preparation packaging and labeling of eye drops in this video we will see eye drops in detail now ophthalmic preparations so what is ophthalmic preparation and where we can insert it so ophthalmic products are the sterile products made for installation into the eye in the space between eye lids and eye balls means over here we can apply the ophthalmic preparations it's depend on particular preparation also but generally we can apply over here like the preparation of eye drops as well as eye ointment we can say eye suspension also now their products must be sterile and are prepared under the same conditions and same methods as per parenteral preparation so now we will see essential requirements for ophthalmic preparations so what are the essential requirement means how our product should be so first of all we will see for foreign particles means all the ophthalmic products should be clear and free from any particles we can say fibers or filament then viscosity means in order to prolong the contact time why we have to maintain viscosity this is the answer in order to prolong the contact time of the drug in the eye what happen various thickening agents are added in them like we can say polyvinyl alcohol in this ratio in this range then polyethylene glycol as well as methyl cellulose or we can say the thickening agent viscosity means it will increase the thickening we can say thickness of the liquid so the thickening agents we can say have following properties so first of all we can say that it should be easy to filter it should be easy to sterile it should be compatible with other ingredient and it should passes the clarity level now the next tonicity so ophthalmic preparations are must be isotonic with a lacrimal secretions whatever fluid is there present in our eyes it should be isotonic with our solution whatever solution we are going to use obviously it should be isotonic it should maintain isotonicity with our fluid which is present in the eye so to avoid the discomfort and irritation and this is the range for example we can say 1.9% boric acid and a sodium acids phosphate buffer are commonly used as a isotonic vehicle now the next is ph of the preparation ph also plays a very important role in the therapeutic activity we can say solubility stability and comfort to the patient so the tears have a ph near about 7.5 so we should maintain that particular ph then the next is sterility means the ophthalmic preparation are must be sterile when it prepared for example pseudomonas aeruginosa is a very common gram negative bacteria which generally found in the ophthalmic products and it may be cause serious infection to the cornea that's why whatever ophthalmic preparation we are going to use we have to insert in our eyes so it should be obviously sterile now surface activity so the vehicles so we can see that the vehicles are used in ophthalmic preparation must have good weighting ability to penetrate cornea and other tissues for example the benzal conium chloride or we can say polysorbate 20 polysorbate 80 are some of the surfactant which are commonly used now ophthalmic products 
so these are the examples of ophthalmic product for example we can say eye drops eye lotion eye ointment and eye suspension are generally used ophthalmic products but as per your syllabus we have to discuss eye drops eye lotion and eye ointment in detail so in this part 1 we have to discuss eye drops in detail so what is eye drops so here we can see that here we have to insert eye drops why the name is drop eye drops are sterile aqueous or we can say oily solutions or suspension of the drug that are instilled into the eye with the help of dropper that's why it's known as eye drops the eye drops are usually contain the drugs having some properties like antiseptic anesthetic as well as anti inflammatory properties now what are the essential characteristic of eye drops as we have already seen what are the essential requirements for ophthalmic products this is the specific requirement for eye drop that we have to maintain so they should be iso osmotic with a lacrimal secretion obviously obviously we have to insert it into the eye that's why it should be iso osmotic with a lacrimal secretion they should be free from foreign particles fibers and filament as we, as we have seen already they should have almost neutral ph they should be preserved with a suitable bactericide and they should remain stable during its storage it should not you can say different you will not find different stability it should be stable other or else what happen we can say the shelf life of the product will be reduced now now the next is formulating agents means how we can prepare eye drops and what are the other ingredients we have to include so first we have to include thickening agents for example methyl cellulose polyvinyl alcohol or polyethylene glycol we can add as a thickening agent to increase the viscosity then buffers we can include boric acid sodium acid phosphate sodium citrate as a buffering agent then antioxidants so which kind of antioxidants we can use this are the example sodium metabisulfite in this range and we can say sodium thiosulfate we can include then the next is weighting agent so we so we can add polysorbate 20 and polysorbate 80 as a weighting agents and we have to insert the isotonicity adjustment substances so here we can say uh, these are the droppers this is the bottle now right now this kind of uh, preparation this is the container of the eye drop now we will see how we can prepare it preparation method of preparation for eye drops so there are three steps generally first is preparation of fungicidal and bactericidal vehicle then second step is a dissolution of medicaments we can say api and formulating agents and third we have to do clarification as well as sterilization now we will see this step in detail so first we will see the preparation of bactericidal and fungicidal vehicle so these are generally used vehicle like a benzalkonium chloride then chlorhexidine acetate so why we are using this so it's absorbed by polyvinyl chloride and it will develop a deposit when in contact with the rubber line so we should maintain this conditions when we are storing this particular vehicle we should maintain some conditions because it will produce this kind of problems now when we are storing the chlorhexidine acetate what happen slightly degrades on a autoclave and it will inactivated by cork so we should maintain this all of the above compounds require protection from light which type of precaution to use stock solutions in a emergency so what we have to do before using or before opening it caps and rubber closures must be pre treated wads of closures should be of silicon rubber for benzalkonium chloride solution then chlorhexidine solution should not be over exposed during autoclaving phenyl mercuric nitrate solution also we can use and it should be rejected if there is a fine precipitate storage solutions to be sterile before storage 
and covered with a readily breakable seal these are the precautions that we have to take now next step is the dissolution of a drug or we can say medicaments and other excipients so depending upon the solubility of medicament for example chloramphenicol is a more soluble in boric acid borax buffer of ph 7 so as per the solubility we have to choose the formulating agent as well as ph heating acids solution of a preservative for example phenyl mercuric nitrate or acetate that we can use as a preservative some has to be dissolved in a cold and in an atmosphere of nitrogen gas so we should maintain this particular conditions as per the medicament what we are selecting and as per the formulating agent what we are adding while dissolving now the next is clarification so passing through microporous plastic membrane we have as we can see in the picture the mean pore size of a 0.8 micrometer means portman filter paper is there and particle free solution depends not only on filter but it will also on the filter free equipment and containers so after clarification we have to do sterilization while sterilizing we can uh, do sterilization in autoclave and we can maintain the condition at 90 to 98 to 100 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes then filtration we have to filter our solution from the pore size of this and diameter should be this of the membrane this we can see here now the next is the sphenex holders for small volume for stability this kind of holders are used to maintain stability now the next is a milex filter unit seal type this is the other example of a filter you can see it now volume supply so small volume for and for after that we can see the volume supply how we can supply the volume so for small volume each container not more than 10 ml and separate containers if more than 10 ml and for large volume contamination is more and difficult in storing and usage so particularly the eye drop should be supply in a small volume should be not more than 10 ml then the next is container which kind of container we can use for eye drops so single application so minimum unit multi application container we can use like a traditional eye drop bottle whatever uh, we are using today then teat bottle and screw cap bottle or we can use plastic bottle it should be amber color either for neutral glass or a rubber teat now instruction to use eye drop how we can insert eye drop so first what we have to do whenever we are using eye drop we have to wash our hands after that pull lower eyelids down gently with one hand and if the dropper is separate then squeeze the rubber bulb while dropper is in bottle to bring the liquid into dropper or replace on bottle after that holding the dropper above eye and drop medicine inside lower lid while looking up and release lower lid then try to keep eye open and not blink for at least 30 seconds this is the instruction how we can use the eye drops then examples of eye drop we can see the physostigmine eye drop physostigmine sulfate 0.5 g sodium metal bisulfate 0.2 g benzalkonium chloride solution we can use purify water to maintain the quantity sufficient for 100 ml now labeling so which kind of labeling should be there on eye drops so it should be there like a for external use only stored in a cool place discard the preparation one month after its first opening whenever we are using eye drop we can use it for one month only after opening that's why this labeling should be there you can see on the product do not use the preparation if irritation persist so this the detail for eye drops now in the next lecture we will see for eye lotion as well as eye ointment
थैंक यू जिया लर्नर्स फॉर वॉचिंग दी वीडियो